Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I am excited to see what this looks like on the green screen because I have no idea, but these little flowery thing, the leaves right here, they are teal on my dress, teal green, and I'm excited to see what they're going to look like <laughs> because they're probably going to end up purple or something, but um, there we go. Today let's talk about things that are on my wish list and that have been on my wish list in most instances for quite a while and I just never buy them. Even whenever I have the opportunity, even whenever I have the money, even whenever I have a coupon or a gift card or Ulta points saved up, I just never pull the trigger and buy them. So let's talk about those because I know that we all have those items that are always on our list but we just never quite can bring ourselves to actually purchase them for whatever reason. And I also want to say that if you guys have tried any of these products, let me know what you thought about them because maybe it will push me over the edge to really needing to buy them or being like, nah, never mind, maybe I don't need it. So you let me know if you like or dislike any of these also. So first up, a product that I have heard so many people rave about. Um, and who is it? I think it's Nikia Joy that always talks about how she loves this primer for oily skin. And it is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. You guys, number one, it's hella expensive. Number two, they do have a travel size that's like 19 bucks. And I've put it in my cart so many times and then been like, eh, never mind. And I back out. <laughs> I just, I think it's because I have such bad luck with primers in general that I'm kind of like weary of trying it. And you guys know, I'm terrible, terrible about returning things. So if I don't like it, chances are I'm stuck with it because I just won't. <laughs> go that extra mile, literally, to go to the mall and return it. That's the thing. If I can return something to Ulta, nah, I might, it's like 50-50, I might go and do it. But if it's Sephora, I purchase almost everything from Sephora online, and the thought of having to box it back up and send it back, no thank you, I hate doing that. And the thought of going to the mall Listen, the mall is full of teenagers, and I don't want to be there. It is just a cesspool. It's like going in there is like scary. <laughs> There's just so much going on. No, I don't like to do it. And even though we are home on Mondays, which typically you would think it would be um, not busy, <sighs> Somehow, there's always like herds of migrant teenagers just roaming. No. Oh my gosh. I don't know. They just like scare me. Oh, I don't like to be around teenagers. They're just, whoa. <laughs> so, <laughs> since I can really only get it like at Sephora, um, you know, or or some other place that I would have to go back to the mall to, to return it, I just am like, hmm, I don't know. So... If you have oily skin and you've tried it, is it actually that good or is it just kind of meh? I don't know. <laughs> Next up is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation. Another product that I've heard so many people say is either really great or really bad. Um, I've seen oily skin people say that it's their holy grail and oily skin people say that they freaking hate it. Now, I feel like for me, I just really love a powder foundation lately for the past like several months, like six, eight, nine months or so. And anytime that I wear a liquid foundation, I'm almost always feeling like, oh, it's accentuating things. It looks, you know, not great. And I just feel like I'm almost never happy with it. But I do love how people say that it is very transfer resistant because that's one of my main issues with liquid foundation is that I feel like no matter how much I powder it and setting spray it, if I touch my face, it's coming off everywhere and I hate that. Whereas I don't really deal with that with the powder foundation. And I feel like with the combination of the powder foundation and the Too Faced Hangover setting spray, it doesn't look too powdery. It still looks a little bit dewy um, without looking oily. So I really like that combination. So if this could be a liquid foundation that doesn't accentuate things and doesn't make me look gross and doesn't transfer, then I would want to buy it. But it's also one of those things where I need to go to... Do they have it at Ulta? I think they have it at Ulta, maybe. Um, but I really need to go to the store and, like, actually look and see what color I would be 
because it's hard to tell online. You know, everybody swatches in different lighting. Everything looks different. Undertones look different. I just need to see it in person. And I just haven't brought my ass over there to do it yet. <laughs> so let me know if you've tried that one and like it or hate it. The second one is a product that I have tried before and wanted to buy the full size of and then just kind of never did it. <laughs> so this one is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I did a video on this long time ago and I really liked how it looked but I did feel like to use as just a um, no makeup makeup day concealer um, I would need to get the next shade up, the next shade darker. I think it, I think it was the darker one. Um, to have it look good without foundation and stuff and even though I loved the foundation or the the concealer and how it looked and everything, I just kind of was like, uh, oh, you know, the full size is thirty dollars. Maybe I'll try something else. And then I tried so many other concealers that I thought were pretty good, and it just kind of dropped off my radar. Like I still have it on my list of things that I want to buy, but I just never pull the trigger on it. I don't know. I feel like at this point maybe it's not even worth getting it because. I have so many others that I really enjoy, but the other one to that is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer, the one that's in the little pot. Number one, I don't love a potted product in general, um, but that one intrigues me. But I feel like also because it's matte, it may not look great under the eye, but a lot of people love it. So I don't know. I go back and forth on that one, but it's another one of those where it's like, uh, do I want to try it? Do I not? And I just can't ever just go for it. Next up is a brand that I have not necessarily been super intrigued by. I just feel like I'm not exactly the target market. And it is Fenty. I feel like the foundation had too many eh, reviews that I really didn't want to bother buying it. The primer, people didn't seem to love. The eyeshadow palettes, I'm totally not like intrigued by. The highlighters clearly are going to be way too blingy for what my taste is. Um, and those matte lipsticks, I don't really like the, the concept. Like they seem super, super dry and I don't like the little skinny stick um, thingy. Like it's just, I guess I'm just not... I'm just not the target market, you know? I, I feel like it skews a little bit more like young and hip, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm an old lady in a 31-year-old's body. <laughs> but I am intrigued by the Gloss Balm. Here's the thing, though. I feel like it's a really tiny little bottle for $18. And for $18, I could get a Clinique um, long last glossware that I know I like or I could get the Fenty one that I'm not sure if I like so if you have it let me know what you think about it because it's one of those where I'm like oh I should really get that and then I just don't but of the ones on this list I feel like that's the one that I would be most yeah most um what's the word here likely <laughs> to purchase in the near future um, because I do love me a gloss. I just don't know. I wish that there was more colors of it. I think that she's supposedly working on that, but, uh, we'll see. The next one is the Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow Duo Packaging. Freaking beautiful. Um, also, I think I'm paying like $60 for the packaging. Um, because I think that's how much it is. I think it's 60 or 70 bucks or something. That's the main thing keeping me from buying this. And I know that Beautylish does like have a great return policy and stuff, but again, it's it's the freaking return thing. <laughs> if I got it and didn't love it, I would be like, ugh, now I have to return it because it costs so much. Um, and I would be like kicking and screaming all the way to the FedEx. <laughs> so um, I'm just, I'm not sure about it because I feel like I'm kind of picky about both products. I'm picky about bronzer and I'm picky about highlight. Um, so I do love a nice subtle lit from within highlight and I do love a bronzer that isn't going to look too orange. So if you've tried this, if you know those things about this product, 
let me know because I'd really love to try it but I'm just like very hesitant because of the price point on that one. Next up is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Basically anything double wear. Um, I at first wanted to try just the regular liquid double wear and then you know I, I know that so many peop people like oily people swear by it but it's one of those things where I feel like on my skin with the texture and stuff, I feel like it would probably be really unflattering um, because it is so mattifying. So it kind of gives me pause. And then I really wanted to try the Double Wear Nude, or I think that's what it's called, the, the kind of like watery one. Um, I feel like that might be more up my alley because I don't necessarily need full, full coverage. I don't really care about that. I would rather my skin to look like skin rather than look like I'm wearing a mask. But, um, and I also don't care if it's necessarily oil controlling because I'm kind of in that um, groove lately where I don't really care if I look a little bit dewy as long as my makeup isn't sliding off my face. Um, so if you've tried it and loved it, let me know, or hated it. But I also want to try the Double Wear Powder Foundation because that's right in my wheelhouse right now is the powder foundations. But the thing is, their shade range. Like, I feel like I don't really know what shade to be in their stuff. And you know their little shade guide thing? It's not good. It's crap. Like, whenever I see a shade guide, I want to see, like, it on someone's face so that I can be like, okay, my skin pretty much looks like that person's skin, and then figure it out. I like how Tarte does it like that, you know? Um, I can't think of who else, but the Ulta Shade Finder thing, really good. But the Estee Lauder one is crap. Like, it has, like, a, a digitized color. It's not even, like, the actual color swatch from the powder or the bottle or whatever. It's just like a digital representation of the color and I don't like that because it's it's so hard to figure out what I would be. And again, it's that thing of, I don't wanna go <laughs> to Sephora and actually see them in the store. Um, I know that some Ultas are getting Estee Lauder in there. I don't know if it's at any of my three Ultas yet, but if it is, I might walk over there, drive over there and check it out but one of those products that I want to try it's just what's holding me back with that is the shade range because I just don't know what shade I would be and then highlighters are the last two things Anastasia glow kits here's my problem with those there's four highlighters in there some of them have six that's way too many for me like I just know that I would there's no way no way in hell that I'm going through all of those highlights and I feel like they're also kind of like the blinding highlight but for instance the sweets glow kit I see a lot of people talking about starburst star kissed something like that little pink one and I feel like that looks gorgeous but I don't want to pay forty dollars for one highlight just to give the other three to somebody else um, and I'm not going to ask my friends to like, hey, give me money for this. I'm just going to give it to them if I buy it and I don't want it, you know. So I wish that it came individually. And also, what is, let's just diverge real quick. What is up with them um, taking so long to restock um, like those highlighters, the, um, what they call it, the illuminators, the single ones? Not even that I was interested in it, but like, they came and then they sold out and they just like never restocked them. What happened to that? Um, so I, I don't know. But anyway, regardless, I would love to be able to buy them individually because I just know that I would not use all four of them. Um, and some of them I hear are a little bit chunky and glittery, whereas some um, in the same palette are really nice. So it's like, uh Again, the price versus how much of it I would actually use is what's holding me back on that. And then last is the NARS Highlighting Powder. Um, and this one, my main thing is, I don't know which one I would get. Um, because there was two shades that I was going back and forth on. And I can't even remember what two shades, but one was more like kind of pinky-ish. Not super pinky, but pinky-ish. And then the other one was just kind of like a gold, like a light pale champagne -y gold. Um, 
and I just don't know which one I would want. And at the same time, I don't know if I would love the way that it looked on my skin, but I'm super intrigued by it. Um, so it's one of those things where if I would see it in the store at Ulta, um, I think the NARS selection that I've seen in my local store, one of them, is very, very small. So I don't even think that they have the highlighting powders there. So it's like I would need to see it in person and see, like, would I like the way that this looks, you know, and all that. But that's my list of things that I want but just never end up buying. Oh, I just thought of another one also, the Becca Aqua Luminous Concealer. I feel like I love the fact that it's very hydrating for the under eye. I think I would like that. But again, it's kind of like I don't know which shade I would be and I don't know if I would love it. So I really don't want to spend the money and then have to return it if I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I want to know what are the products that you guys have on your list that you just never end up purchasing even if you had the money to. Um, so there you go. I will catch you guys next time. Bye!